All right, so in this video, we're going to do an introduction on precision landing, you know, what it is from a high level perspective, what it allows us to do, why it's important. So a bunch of fun stuff. So what is precision landing? You know, like how are we defining that phrase? Well, in order to understand how we're defining the precision landing phrase, we should look at it from a relative perspective. So, you know, most conventional drones have a GPS attached to them. And those GPSs allow the drone to land, you know, around plus or minus 10 feet on a landing target on the ground. You know, for, for many applications, that might be good enough. That might be precise enough. If you're a drone surveyor and you just want to scan the field, take a bunch of images and land the drone in a general area, you know, that's probably good for you, plus or minus 10 feet. But there are other uh, applications that require a much, much more precise um, error rate than plus or minus 10 feet. So we're going to define precision landing here as any landing methodology which is accurate to around plus or minus 10 inches or better. So why is precision landing important? What might be some of those drone applications that require that precision landing? Well, you know, there's a lot of things like maybe package delivery, maybe a Amazon consumer of the future has a little target in their backyard that the drone that's delivering a package must identify and land on. Maybe precision agriculture, you know, maybe there's a, a crop spraying drone that needs to land in a very precise location so that um, it can autonomously refuel or refill its pesticide containers. Maybe, you know, drone in a box applications where the drone um, leaves its charging station in a little box, does its mission, and it must return into the box. And, you know, in order to do that, it needs to be able to have a very precise landing methodology. And indoor flight. You know, we mentioned that GPS has plus or minus 10 feet accuracy for landing, but indoors, you don't even have GPS. So you would 100% need some form of precision landing to be able to actually even land the drone indoors. So let's cover a couple of the main precision landing methods that are currently being done. There are two main methods and there are pros and cons to each. We'll go over both of those. The first method in purple, that is any camera empowered with OpenCV for tracking an image on the ground. It's a very simple, simple method. Um, it can be very cheap as we'll see but there are some drawbacks to it we'll cover those then the second one is IR lock for tracking an IR emitting beacon on the ground this is more of a plug-and-play application but regardless of which method you pick you know either one with a well-tuned drone should be able to have a sub 10 inch consistency for landing within a desired target and also both of these methods consist of there being a camera on the drone side that is tracking some object on the ground where you want to do your precision landing. So with the first method we have a simple camera here and it's tracking some image on the ground. This is an Aruko marker that's some foreshadowing for what we'll be doing later on in the course. And then that second method there is a pixie cam fixed to the drone and that is tracking an IR beacon on the ground that is powered by maybe a lipo battery or something but but it emits infrared light that the pixie cam is tracking and is specially fitted with an infrared lens to be able to find those rays now we can start to see one of the biggest differences between these two methods you know the first method is extremely cheap all you need is some camera that's around twenty dollars if you're using a pi cam and then the target on the ground, well, that just costs as much as your, your paper costs because you can just print that target onto a piece of paper and you're good to go. You don't need to power that target with a battery or anything. You don't need to purchase it from a company. You can just print it off. And the second method, you know, the camera is a little bit more expensive. It's $120. It's specially fit with that IR um, lens, so that's a little expensive. And then the beacon... That's not a piece of paper anymore. That's a very complex um, beacon that emits IR light, and it needs to be powered by a LiPo battery. So the price points of both of these methods are very different. So let's see what that means in terms of performance of these two methods. 
Well, the altitude range on the first method being the camera powered with OpenCV. The range, you know, it sort of depends on how you build it. So the altitude range is actually a function of the ground target image size. So that Aruko marker we had in the last slide, you know, is it a huge marker? Is it a small marker, a couple inches? That's a factor for the altitude range. And then another one is the image resolution that you are running your open CV scripts with. The higher the resolution, the higher the altitude you will be able to perform that precision landing from. But basically, like I already said, any altitude should work given a high enough resolution and the right size marker is used. But this does require manual setup and engineering. So it doesn't work just out of the box. Well, the altitude range of the IR lock is a little bit more straightforward. The range is anywhere from zero to 60 feet. So around 20 meters. And this range, you know, it works out of the box. It's not like the OpenCV camera method where you have to configure everything. Basically, it's a plug and play solution. One thing to keep in mind though, while we're discussing altitude ranges, which is the range of your precision landing which means like, you know, the maximum altitude from which you can start a precision land. That depends on the range of your range finder. So if you are using, like I have pictured here, a TA mini um, range finder that has a maximum range of six meters or around 20 feet. Um, if you paired that with the IR lock solution, that would now be your maximum altitude from which you could perform that precision landing. Even though the IR lock solution is capable of working from much higher altitudes, the bottleneck of the precision landing is the range of your range finder. So let's sort of summarize the pros and cons for these two methods. You know, with the first one, the, the big pro is that it's super cheap, right? $20 or, you know, whatever your camera costs that you want to use. And another pro I should probably have mentioned here the altitude is basically boundless because you can always increase the size of your marker on the ground cons though and this might be the other side of that hidden pro that I just mentioned this method does require engineering it and it doesn't really just work right out of the box you need to know OpenCV um, you need to know you know how to track that marker and feed in the error coordinates to um, the drones, ArduPilot, firmware, and all that stuff. So you need to put your engineering hat on if you want to do method one. And the, the other con for this method is it doesn't work in the fog or in the dark. You know, the camera must see that target. Now for IR lock, the pros, you can just plug and play. You just plug it in, everything should work. Might be a few parameters or um, settings to set up on the Mark 1 beacon, but essentially you don't really need to put your engineering hat on with this method. You just put it on and it should work. And this method actually can see through fog, so it's much more um, resistant to weather conditions and it works in the dark as well. The con here is that it's $300 after you account for the $120 camera the $160 Mark 1 beacon that I have pictured here, and the $20 LiPo battery that you need to power your Mark 1 beacon. So it, yeah, it's around $300. And the other con is that the range of precision landing is limited. It's bounded at zero to 60 feet. 